Hey, how's it going guys? It's Nate here. And Skyrim is a game where magical effects are a plenty. From spells to shouts to potions to powers, it seems there's an endless supply of unique magical activities and abilities for the Dragonborn to use. Or see used by their enemies. Alas, while we're all familiar with the basic stuff, like a simple flame cloak or a healing potion, there are a handful of magic-related effects and the like that aren't so well known. Indeed, even after all this time, many of the Elder Scrolls V's most interesting wizarding options have been hidden to a significant portion of the community. So today we'll be diving into some of the coolest secret potions, spells, perks, and powers that you may have missed in the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. Starting off, we begin our journey in the town of Iverstead a relatively small and quiet settlement that's been rocked by quite a bit of turmoil recently. The disappearance of one of its residents, combined with reported ghost sightings at a nearby ancient Nordic ruin known as Shroud Hearth Barrow, have left the locals on edge. The town's innkeeper, a Nord named Wilhelm, will offer the player a brief miscellaneous quest to investigate that tomb and see if you can tell whether or not it's truly being haunted and hopefully take care of the problem if it is. Well, upon entering the Barrow, it will quickly become obvious that the people of Iverstead weren't joking around, as a strange, ghostly dark elf by the name of Windelius Garathian will appear from behind a locked door, demanding that we leave. Eventually, after solving a short puzzle and getting the door opened, we can confront the spirit, who will immediately turn hostile. But once Wendelius has been defeated, something strange will happen. He'll leave a corpse, and the body will lose its ghostly glow. What's going on here? This isn't normal. Well, some nearby journals left behind by Wendelius explain the truth. You see, this dark elf wasn't some 1,000-year-old spirit, but instead an adventurer searching for treasure, who moved in here just a little while ago, maybe even less than a few weeks. He came hoping to slowly explore the tomb, but ran into a problem when he found a door he couldn't get past, and since then he was working to get it open. When the locals got too close, Windelius would simply make some ghost noises to scare them off. Eventually, the Dunmer developed a potion that gave him the spectral glow we saw, and then he was really able to spook some people. For a while, this tactic worked excellent. Nobody suspected a grave robber, and the Dunmer could loot scot-free. Though, after he started consuming his elixir, Mr. Garathian's journal writing starts getting a bit... delirious. It seems the potion was driving him mad. It's not too deep into the entry before the man seems convinced that he truly is a ghost. It started off as an easy way to keep noisy people at bay, but when Delius now actually thought he was dead, and decided that it was his duty to defend Shroudhearth Barrow. And that's how Iverstead's ghost problem got started. Although that's not where it has to end. Because lucky for us, in the room we find him, two bottles of his mysterious serum he created, but hadn't consumed yet, can be found, left behind. Filter of the Phantom is what they're called. And when consumed, you'll actually turn spectral, and get the same spiritual aura Windelius and the real phantoms do for 30 seconds. There's only two of these potions available in the entire game right here, and they're the only way to get such a cool effect. So make sure you save first. The spectral form is purely cosmetic, and doesn't seem to have much of an effect on your own status or interactions with other characters though it is certainly unique. Next on our list, Circle of Protection is an expert level restoration spell one can acquire after they've reached level 75 in that school of magic. Its effects are pretty straightforward. When cast, a small circle of magical light will wrap around the player, and undead creatures up to level 20 that enter that circle will end up fleeing in terror. Frankly, while it does come with a neat little animation, the spell isn't incredibly useful. It only lasts for 30 seconds, and you'll usually just be better off spending that magicka on something more impactful. However, there's one little quirk about the Circle of Protection that, when used to one's advantage, transforms the spell into among the most useful in the game. You see, everything in that circle is technically being subjected to a panic spell. It just only affects Draugr and specific undead but still is very much a spell being cast. It's just invisible to us. In Skyrim, there's also another magical effect called Spell Absorption. 
that essentially converts spells being casted on the player into magicka. You can receive spell absorption from wearing the appropriately enchanted clothes, being a Breton, receiving the Antronach Stone's blessing, or simply learning the Antronach Alteration perk. So, because magic is technically being applied to you when you're in that circle, even if it's not actually affecting you, when you have Spell Absorption active, you'll regenerate Magicka insanely quickly. It basically just fills you with this stuff. You should recharge Magicka quickly enough to also continuously keep recasting the Protection Circle, creating a bit of a loop. One strategy I found very effective was just to go to an area that I thought had somewhat favorable terrain, cast the protection spell, and then start shooting fireballs and other ranged magicka at enemies from a distance, almost like a turret. At this point, it's unclear if this whole interaction between these two types of magic was left in by accident by Bethesda. It probably was. No matter. Now I guess it's a feature. Coming in at number three, we're headed to the Greybeard's Fortress in the Sky, High Hrothgar. Well, we're not going inside. More specifically, we're examining the path that leads up the mountain to it. Known as the 7,000 Steps, the trail leading up Skyrim's tallest hill is quite an unforgettable one. But as you make the exhausting journey, you'll notice that along the road are a number of etched tablets attached to some stones. The player can interact with these tablets to read them. Altogether, there's 10, and if you interact with all of them, after reading the last tablet, you'll be given a new special active power, called Voice in the Sky, that'll last for 24 in-game hours. What Voice in the Sky does is keep animals from fleeing or fighting the player while in effect. This is insanely useful if you're looking to get some hunting done, or just crawl through a dungeon that you know will be home to a large number of spiders or bears. However, what the spell's description doesn't tell you is that it doesn't just impact animals. For whatever reason, Voice in the Sky also applies to vampires as well. Meaning, whenever you enter a dungeon loaded with those fanged fiends, they'll just sort of ignore you. Once you've attacked one, that single vampire will turn hostile, but won't get any help from their friends. It should be noted that vampiric thralls are not affected by the power, so they still pose a threat, but their masters don't, and thralls are a lot weaker anyway. While Voice in the Sky only lasts 24 hours, the Dragonborn can simply go back and reread the 10 tablets again to recharge it making it a good idea to say a quick hello to the Greybeards before you go off to complete the next Dawnguard quest in your lineup, or clear out your next Vampire Den. As for why this is a thing, why vampires count as animals, I'm entirely clueless. But hey, when life gives you lemons, uh, take advantage of them. For fourth spot, this magical effect is particularly neat, because it really is hidden. Let me explain. After you've progressed far enough into the Thieves' Guild questline, Vex will offer you a side mission to go out and steal 24 Unusual Gems, or Gems of Baron Zaya, that have been scattered across Skyrim, as well as an artifact called the Crown of Baron Zaya. She's a bit dodgy at first, but towards the end of the quest, Vex will admit that she's wanted you to recover these items in order to put together and recreate a Paragon. Basically, a really powerful altar that makes Thieves more effective. The guild hasn't had a paragon for a long while, so she'll be pretty thrilled with your actions. Or at least as thrilled as Vex gets. Once you've given her all the gems and the crown for the paragon, the quest will be completed. Vex will give you some coin for your efforts, and that'll be that. Alas, what you may not know is that when you do finish this mission, the player is awarded with not just gold, but an interesting new active effect. The Prowler's Prophet. What's so weird about Prowler's Prophet is that we can't actually see it in our active effects menu. It's there, we know it is because the game tells us the spell has been added and we can double check through the console, but for some reason it's hidden. Now, since we can't see it, it's kind of hard to know what this effect really does. But thankfully with some ruffling about in the game's files, we can figure it out fairly easily. Prowler's Prophet, in reality, increases the player's likelihood of finding one to four additional gems across a variety of containers, mostly chests, burial urns, and the like, but also inventories of certain NPCs. When searching through the qualified containers, there's a 9.4% chance of finding one extra gem, a 42% of finding two, 
a 42% of Finding 3, and another 9.4% of Finding 4. So typically, you can now expect to find 2-3 to three additional gems per applicable container. This may not seem like much, but the ramifications are huge. Gems sell for a lot, especially if your speech skill is well leveled. Considering how sparsely such items otherwise spawn, it's insane. Merchants will start running out of money regularly after you get this magical bonus. The only thing really balancing Prowler's profit is the fact that most people won't end up getting it until sometime fairly late into a playthrough, as you gotta go a decent way into the Thieves Guild questline. And I usually save the Thieves Guild for the end anyway. No matter, the sheer overpoweredness of this buff is quite surprising, considering the game doesn't tell you what it is. And while Vex does allude to the Paragon you're building, potentially increasing the guild's fortunes, I'm willing to bet most of us didn't take her word seriously. But boy, were we wrong. Or at least I was anyway. And finally, last on our list, now that we've got all this extra coin, we're gonna need somewhere to spend it. Thankfully, number 5 has got us covered. After reaching level 50 in this speech skill tree, the Dovakin will be able to unlock a new perk, known as Merchant. What Merchant does is allow one to sell any type of item in their inventory to any vendor in the game. Typically, one is limited in what they can sell based off of the vendor type and your own conditions, but unlocking Merchant removes such constraints, making it fairly useful. But Merchant has a second concealed effect that, for whatever reason, it doesn't tell you about. On top of allowing you to sell anything to any vendor, it also allows you to buy any item within any vendor's inventory. This makes a pretty big difference, because most vendors aren't actually selling directly out of their inventory. In fact, most vendors are selling out of chests located underneath the map. It's kinda weird, but the merchant perk forces them to list their own inventory's items too, which is nice. One major advantage is that it will enable you to buy a heck of a lot more alchemical ingredients from in-game vendors. For whatever reason, a lot of vendors have a lot of alchemical ingredients in their inventories that they're not selling. This seems to be a bit of a mishap on Bethesda's part that they didn't really intend. It seems as though they wanted them to actually list those items, but they didn't. Merchant as a perk, though, negates this entire problem, so you'll be exposed to a lot more ingredients, making it pretty useful for anyone involved in alchemy. Or, really, anyone who likes buying things in general. Just get the perk, it's pretty nice. <laughs> and with that, we're going to wrap up. Five secret... I don't know, magic things? I, I actually haven't come up with a title yet at the time of making this video. I just know the theme of it, which is magical things that are kind of secret. I don't know, hopefully I'll think of a title by the time I start uploading. Anyway, thanks for stopping by everyone. Which of everything we explored on today's list did you find to be the most fascinating or interesting? And what magical abilities, potions, spells, what have you do you know of that are somewhat hidden that I didn't get a chance to cover? Leave a comment down below. As always, like ratings are very much appreciated. Again, thanks for watching, and I hope to catch you all in my next video. Peace out, everyone.